Welcome to the Widowed Mom Podcast, episode 275, an essential ingredient to loving life again. Welcome to the Widowed Mom Podcast, the only podcast that offers a proven process to help you work through your grief, to grow, evolve, and create a future you can truly look forward to. Here's your host, Master Certified Life Coach, Grief Expert, Widow, and Mom, Krista St. Germain. Hey there, welcome to another episode of the podcast. If you are listening to this when it drops, fall decorations are coming out. <laughs> I've waited long enough. Uh, it's time. I'm, I'm ready for fall. It is weird though, because this semester, uh, my partner's youngest is away at school now. He is a freshman and he just started school several hours away from us. And then of course, his oldest got married last December. And then my oldest is in Argentina for this semester. And so it's just my partner, myself, and my youngest, and the dogs, and a cat, uh, which is quiet. And it's going to be weird. But such is the way of life, right? Things change, and things are changing in our house too. So maybe you might be experiencing some of that. Seems like there are quite a few people that I know who are sending kids away to school this year. So here we are. Um, let's see. Okay, here's what I want to tell you before we jump in. Grief Essentials. We start the 17th. Early bird special is still going. If you are interested, you can learn more at coachingwithkrista.com forward slash grief essentials. Grief Essentials is an eight-week program designed for those who want early grief to be easier. It is not for people who are in the grief plateau and who are, you know, wanting to love life again, but just don't know how it is for the people who are kind of miserable because they're in early acute grief and they need tools and they want community. And that's what I have come to learn is that the right tools and the right community do make early grief easier, not easy, easier. And that's what grief essentials is all about. Eight weeks. We start on the 17th early bird pricing is available until next week, next Tuesday. Yes. So you have a little bit of time left. So go jump on that and I will hope to see you there. And today's episode, I actually got the idea for from one of my former clients, Jenny Douglas. We were having a conversation and unfortunately, I'm sorry, you're going to have to wait to listen to that conversation until um, early October, but we recorded a podcast episode and she said something and it was so good. And I thought, oh, Yes, I want to make sure that everyone knows that. I think that's worthy of its own podcast episode. And I'll let I'll let you wait to hear it from her, but essentially, you know, the idea was that at a certain point in her own journey, she realized that she wasn't going to create what she wanted until she believed she was worthy of having it. And it took her a while to get there. And so that's what I want to talk about today, because that is sometimes the ingredient to loving life again that we aren't talking about, but it is essential. If we don't believe that we're worthy of loving life again, we will never be able to create it. And we can do all the things to try to change our lives or change ourselves or create something that we want in the future. And and we will keep repelling it until we figure out how to believe that we're worthy of it, that we can have it. So I want to talk about why that is, right? The power of belief, why you might be struggling with worthiness, why it really does matter if you want to create a life that you really love again, and then give you a little bit of the next place to start. So what we think is so important. What we think really does shape our reality. How we view the world is a filter for what we see in the world. And so think about this. If you have ever had someone in your life and you, you believe they are a terrible person, <laughs> what you will then see what will then be highlighted to you by the filtering system in your brain is evidence of their terribleness. 
And it won't be because they are fully terrible. It will be because you are thinking of them as terrible, which is then like asking your brain to show you only evidence that lines up with terrible, which means you won't see the things that you might actually believe aren't terrible because your brain will be filtering for terrible and it will just show you example after example after example of how terrible that person is. Now, I'm not trying to convince you to believe that somebody is amazing. If you want to believe they're terrible, it's not a problem. But just know that what we believe does shape our reality because our beliefs are a filter through which we view the world. And so the same thing is true for ourselves. If we don't believe we're worthy of loving life again, we will unconsciously make choices that prove that belief true. We will literally create that belief into reality. It will be a self-fulfilling prophecy. And we won't do it on purpose, but it will feel like, yeah, why do I keep not letting myself have what I want? Why do I keep sabotaging myself? Why, why can everybody else seem to do this, but I can't? So I want to make sure that everyone understands this is important. It is so much less about what we do and so much more about the belief that we're doing it from. Also, believing that we're not worthy of what we want will keep us from taking actions that could create what we want. Our thoughts cause our feelings, our feelings drive our actions, our actions produce our results. So if we're believing that we aren't worthy of something, we won't feel good. We won't feel empowered. We won't feel capable. We won't feel powerful, excited, motivated, optimistic, committed, brave, any of that. We won't feel it. We'll, and we'll probably feel unworthy. And think about how you behave when you feel unworthy. What types of actions do you take? How do you talk to yourself? Probably not in ways that would lead you to creating what you want next. Probably not in ways that would lead you to loving life again in whatever way that might look like for you. So first we want to bag it up and start with what we believe. If we don't believe that we're worthy of loving life again, it will be like there is a hole in our boat and we just keep pouring water you know, out of it with buckets constantly. <laughs> and we never get where we want because there's a hole in the boat. And it makes sense sometimes that even if you never struggled with believing that you were worthy before, you might be struggling now. Sometimes grief does that. If you're feeling a lot of guilt about what happened or about, you know, what you might create in the future or being happy again, grief can distort, guilt can distort your, your sense of self-worth, right? It can distort your self-concept, kind of hijack it. Our hormones are wild and crazy sometimes, in, especially in acute grief, right? We're not firing on all cylinders sometimes and that we're not sleeping well and maybe we're not treating ourselves very well and everything feels like it's out of whack. It's a full body chaotic experience, which can make it harder to be nice to ourselves and be kind to ourselves. And then there's all of the identity challenges that come with partner loss. It makes sense that we had a shared identity. We were a we. And when you lose your person, it makes sense that you would feel like you've lost part of your identity, which can really shake your sense of worthiness and your self-concept. So it makes sense that you might not have struggled with this before. Often though, what I find, and usually more often than not, when I'm working with women and we're you know, and mom goes on, or we're working towards them creating whatever it is that they want next. What I often find is that it's not a new belief about themselves that shows up as much as it is we uncover 
some beliefs that have been there for decades that either haven't been dealt with or we just didn't know about, but they show themselves because we're shining lights on parts of our brain that we haven't looked at before. And because grief just sometimes opens that door and the junk shows up and there it is for us to deal with, which I would say is an opportunity if we want to take it. If you've been thinking that you aren't worthy of loving life again, I don't want you to beat yourself up about it. I don't want you to make it harder on yourself by making yourself feel badly because you've been thinking that. I bet you probably aren't choosing it on purpose. I bet you don't wake up and say, you know what? Today is the day that I'm just going to believe that I'm not worthy of loving life again. We don't, we're not walking around doing that, right? We have existing patterns of thought in our brain. We think something long enough that we gather enough evidence for it and it becomes a belief. And before we know it, we just believe something about ourselves. I just believe that there's something wrong with me. I just believe that I don't deserve to be truly happy again something, right? There's a belief that we picked up somewhere, we thought it enough times, that now our relationship to it is tough because it just feels so stinking true. We don't even question it. And because we don't question it, sometimes it's like the dark little secret that we don't really want anybody to know about, that we have this mean thought about ourselves, but it's really just true. So we just don't talk about it. And maybe that's what we were taught too, right? If there's something uncomfortable, just ignore it, just carry on, just cover it up, just keep going. And so we just keep going. And then we focus on doing, do, 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 create, 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 produce, produce, produce. But ultimately, if we don't Look at the belief that we had, that we don't deserve it. It doesn't matter how much we act from that belief. We won't create it. It has to be both. We have to believe we're worthy of it. And then we take action from that belief. So again, I don't want you to feel bad about it. If you've been believing that you're not worthy, there are a lot of us end up there. This is not an uncommon thing. I want you to identify it, realize how important it is, and then consider changing it. If you believe you're worthy of loving life again, from that place, you will be able to start imagining a future that feels exciting and hopeful to you. If you believe you're worthy, from that belief, you will be open to new possibilities and new experiences and new relationships and new opportunities that you might otherwise not even notice or pursue. When you believe that you're worthy of loving life again, you're more likely to take good care of yourself, to invest in yourself, to invest in your growth, to invest in self-care, whatever that looks like for you. And those things prioritizing yourself and investing in yourself are essential for creating something different. So I'm going to tell you what I believe, and I'm going to offer that you can think this thought too, if it helps you. I believe that our worth is non-negotiable. I believe that we're just put on this planet fully worthy. I don't believe worth is earned. I don't believe it's something we can lose. I believe it's just a gift that we were given. We are all worthy just by the nature of the fact that we are humans born onto this planet. We are all worthy. Our worth is fully intact. I just believe that. And if you notice, that's how we treat babies. We treat babies as fully worthy. We don't look at one baby and go, mm, I don't know, is that baby worthy? Mm, I don't know. I don't know, that might not be a very good baby. No, we don't do that, right? When a baby is born, we love it. We assume it deserves good things and we try to take care of it. And I think we can, we can extend that belief to ourselves. However, if when you go to think, 
I deserve to love my life again. I'm worthy. My worth is fully intact. If that doesn't feel true to you, that's okay. First of all, it's okay. Don't be alarmed. We can get there, right? But if it doesn't feel true to you, then I do not recommend that you practice affirmations. I do not recommend that you stand in front of the mirror and recite things that don't feel true in your body. Not going to work. We have to ease our way into it. This is one of my, one of the things that, that helped me so much because I kind of always, well, not always, but in the beginning of learning about changing patterns in our brain, I thought that had a lot to do with thinking something you don't believe with repetition so that eventually you would believe it. And I struggled with that because it felt fake to me. I didn't feel authentic. It just felt like I was kidding myself and I didn't like it. And I think it's refreshing to know that if that's what you think, you aren't alone. And there are plenty of other ways around practicing affirmations we don't believe, right? I teach a tool in Mom Goes On called Thought Ladders. There's another tool I love called Bridge Thoughts. We can ease our way into new ways of thinking so that they do feel authentic, okay? So know that it's possible. Just because you don't believe it now when you go to think it doesn't mean you can't believe it someday. It just means we have to work our way in there. It's one of the things that we do in Mom Goes On. All right. So don't, please don't practice affirmations that you don't believe. It's just not going to get you anywhere. What I do want to invite you to do is to get curious. I do want to invite you to put yourself in a curious space and ask yourself, what if this story about my worth is actually just a story? What if the idea that I don't deserve to love my life again, or that it's possible for others, or it's not possible for me, however, whatever flavor that shows up in your brain is, what if that's just a well-practiced thought that has become a belief? What if it only feels true because it's so well-practiced and because the filtering system in your brain has found evidence for it, and you have thought it repetitiously such that it becomes a pattern, a pathway in your brain that you don't have to consciously think anymore, and it just shows up. What if that's all it is, is a pattern in your brain? And we know that the brain is highly plastic, meaning we can create new pathways in the brain. It's not fixed. Just because a pattern exists that doesn't mean anything. We can definitely overwrite existing patterns and create new ones. Well, it's not really an overwriting process. It's really more of we start giving our energy and attention to new patterns and the old ones kind of die off. That would be a more accurate way of saying it, but it's possible. And the first thing to do is to get curious. Whatever your brain's story is about your worth is just a story get curious about how I could be right about that. I love curiosity for this reason, because when we get curious about something enough, right, that's when we can actually get some authority over it. If you get curious enough about something like this, at a certain point, a switch will flip and the light will come on and you will never see that issue the same way. And just that sense of awareness, which turns into a sense of authority, will give you what you need to change the pattern. So I want you to start with curiosity, okay? I also want to tell you that changing your relationship with yourself, and by that, I'm another way of saying that is changing the way that you think about yourself, changing your beliefs about yourself, changing the way that you talk to yourself, it usually isn't something that is done quickly, right? It isn't something that... We can just journal about and then poof, it changes. It usually is something that requires effort and it requires extended curiosity and it requires practicing. It requires identifying the stories in our brain, deciding if we want to keep thinking them, replacing them with new ones, intentionally practicing, cultivating them, really recreating on purpose the worthiness that you want to believe you have, right? That, that relationship with yourself. 
And in Mom Goes On, we spend an entire month talking about our relationship with ourselves and doing our, doing work on that. And we could probably spend much more time. A month tends to move the needle pretty well. But I, I just want to normalize that. Please don't beat yourself up when you listen to one podcast episode and you like the idea of it and it doesn't change automatically. There's nothing wrong with you. It's just something that requires work. I strongly suggest that you you consider getting support around it if it is an issue for you, whether it is some grief group in your local area, whether it is a, an amazing counselor, whether it is mom goes on, or it is one of my programs, you are worth support in whatever way that feels good to you. And if you can put yourself in a container where other people are pursuing the same thing that you're pursuing and they're struggling with the same things that you're struggling with, it will help you. You will see that it's not a you problem, right? You will see that it's not a flaw in you. You will see, oh, other humans are having this experience. Other people are on the same journey. They're having the same challenges. They have the same mean voice in their head that I have in mine. And look at them doing that work. And look at them making progress. If they can do it, I can do it. And we're all doing it together. This is why I love what I do. And again, whether you come work with me or get, in, get yourself in, in some space that feels like that to you, you will move so much faster than you would ever move alone. I used to not believe that and I used to resist it because I'm kind of introverted and I didn't really want to be in community. And more and more and more, I see it demonstrated both in my own life and my own growth and in all of the clients that I work with. Get yourself in community. Surround yourself. Don't do this alone. You're worth not doing it alone. Okay? So I really want you to start noticing, do I believe that I'm worthy of having a life that I love again? And you've not done anything wrong if you don't, but if you don't believe that, it is an essential ingredient. We got to go back and do that work because you will create more of what you believe. And if you want to create a life that you love and you don't believe you, you're worthy of it or that you can have it, you'll never create it. So we just got to start there. So go get curious, ask yourself. What if this is just a story in my brain? What if my worth is fully intact? What if everyone deserves to be loving life? What if my worth has always been solid and my brain just at some point decided that it wasn't? Just get curious and then consider getting some support so that you're not doing it alone. All right? You deserve to love your life again. This is my thought. I believe this. You deserve it. Your worth is fully intact. If I can do it, you can do it. If all the women I work with can do it, you can do it. Okay? Okay. Let's go decorate for fall. <laughs> okay. I love you. You've got this. Take care and I'll see you next week. All right. Bye-bye. If you like what you've been hearing on this podcast and want to create a future you can truly get excited about even after the loss of your spouse, I invite you to join my Mom Goes On coaching program. It's small group coaching just for widowed moms like you, where I'll help you figure out what's holding you back and give you the tools and support you need so you can move forward with confidence. Please don't settle for a new normal that's less than what you deserve. Go to coachingwithkrista.com and click work with me for details and next steps. I can't wait to meet you.